Teddy, Chapter 4 Hello my fellow gnomes and welcome to a video that has been long overdue. If any of you have been following my game, you're probably well aware by now that the fourth chapter of Teddy was released all the way back last year. So why make the video now? Well, I've been sitting on all of this footage of me developing it. It's over 30 hours of screen recordings and it's been just sitting on my hard drive for a long time now, but it's finally time to give it the light of day. If we cast our mind back, you'll probably remember we left off from the third chapter with the baby escaping that toy store only to then find themselves picked up by the father. Now they were wandering along and this could have left the location pretty open for the next level. I was playing about with a few different ideas, maybe a city map for example, and I think a lot of people were expecting them to then go back to the house. Um, but this has kind of been done in a few other games. So I was wanting somewhere else they could look for the mother and I settled on the idea of a zoo. It's always a fun place to hang out with your family and it gave me the opportunity to add several wild animals into the mix. If Zoo Tycoon taught me anything, this is always a wholesome combination. However, putting my psychopathic designs aside for a second, it turns out there's actually plenty of alternative maybe more friendly designs that are publicly available. And if you're building any kind of large map for a game, it's definitely always worth having a look online, just doing some quick research and finding some real life designs that you can then base your own works off. So I did a quick search for some zoo maps. I found hundreds of different layouts, which I could then use to influence my own creation here. A bit of fine penmanship later and voila, mwah. I've created this paper monstrosity. Uh, the rough outline here is to have sort of water zigzagging around the map and then a few bridges and walkways cutting across to help you get around. So I'm just taking inspiration from some of the other designs I've seen. Of course, if you have played this level, you'll probably notice quite a few changes that have been made from this original template here. And I was cautious not to repeat the mistakes I'd made previously on chapter two where I felt like navigating the map almost turned into just walking around in a giant loop, as there just weren't enough alternative escape routes when she got intercepted by Teddy. So later on, as you'll see, I added in some more walkways to sort of make navigation more interesting. Not to mention, I also dropped the idea of monkeys along the way. I'm so sorry for what could have been. But enough talk, let's get into the build. Starting with the grand archway we can see outlined here. So I made use of both wedges and corner wedges to round things out and give the post a sort of conical shape with a narrowed top uh, and then created some wooden posts coming out of it to hold the sign. I'm using the 3D text plugin here. I'll leave the link in the description to all of my plugins that you'll see here if you wanna check any of them out. Uh, and then making this union here, create a backing for the science text, and we have a pretty good looking entrance. Of course, since we also need to lock in our visitors, we need to add some pretty sturdy railings to go along with it. So I have a turnstile that will somehow be magically impenetrable unless they have the perfect key to escape. And as always though, I am making sure to make good use of the mum and baby models here. Just make sure that everything is kept to scale, which is actually pretty important when I have three different sizes of characters. We've got the teddy, we've got the, the mum and dad, and we've also got the baby. So it needs to be able to sort of fit all three of these different character sizes. Next up comes the payment booth. I decided to make it in a green and yellow color, so it sort of matches the sign and also gives it a sort of nature theme too both cheerful colors for our zoo. I then started to extend out the walls with the Archimedes plugin, which helps with the easier angle snapping. I then added in some flooring and slowly the zoo started to come together. With such friendly and welcoming colors, I'm sure nothing could ever go wrong here. 
Now at this point I already do have quite a few previous assets from some of the old builds. So I added in the toilet block and the bridge. I thought these might come in handy later. Now I could change these out at any time for new models and I did actually end up doing that in the end. But it can be helpful to use models as a sort of placeholder to help you imagine where everything is going to go in the build before you commit to creating something entirely new. Now with all this space I'm creating here, I did need something to fill it, so I set about creating this tree. My first attempt using cylinders turned out rather questionable and I just didn't like how it looked, so I scrapped it and started again from scratch. This time I sort of leaned more into the blocky aesthetic and I think it worked out a lot better. It might not be the best tree you've ever seen, but it's at least recognisable as one and it got the winning seal of approval from my Discord. So then it was time to sketch out the wider part of the map and do a spot of landscaping. I started filling in the water and sculpting out the land with triangles through the help of the Altrazine's terrain plugin. This allows me to create loads of these little black nodes you see, and then it automatically makes triangular shapes to connect them all together. So the end result gives you this kind of semi-natural looking landscape with a few dips and peaks. After some more of this, I then had a central island area and then various land going around it. One of the zoo designs that I'd looked at online featured a butterfly house, so I thought this would be a cool to have a glass structure just like that in the centre of my map. And it took quite a while messing around with all various different columns and angles and so on, but in the end, I was pretty happy with how this glass structure turned out. Once this was done, I then added a little animal enclosure at the back, threw in some giraffe models on the toolbox, and suddenly I have something that starts to resemble the map we have today. The main difference you'll notice here is the way the bridges are laid out, and I was concerned that having players climb the hill of the island could make navigation difficult, especially for the teddy bot to be able to pathfind and walk up and down. So to solve this, I decided to create a new bridge that could transport players right from the entrance area directly into the butterfly glass house. Again, I always like to use some kind of reference image, so this bridge was roughly based on the image you see here. Now the bridge ended up being quite an odd shape due to the gap and I wanted it to curve over the river but then it had to sort of flatten out at the end in order to make up for the gap. It might have a bit of an odd shape but I like to think it gives it maybe a bit of old rickety charm. Next up I started working on the gift shop area and rather than building it out of bricks like it originally tended, I thought maybe it could be built out of some more natural looking materials like mud and wooden post to sort of fit in with the theme of the map. So I used this sand texture for the wall and then made a little pattern at the top which I thought blended in with the colouring of the bridge. As I was creating this building though, I thought why stop there? So I actually extended the building a lot from the original plan and created this whole walkway area and then another room that came off it, maybe for some supplies or a store cupboard or something. Again, this was roughly inspired from another real life picture of a zoo's walkway, whose design I sort of copied for the roof. Uh, then in terms of the gift shop, I had to sort of throw in some furniture and items into the interior, and we had something resembling a shop. Now due to the awkward sort of multi-angled shape of all the walls here, it made making a roof quite difficult, so I actually used the terrain plugin again to help and that made doing all the various angles a lot easier. Finally, all that was left to do was add on a sign to the entranceway to entice some innocent little kids into the shop with a totally non-threatening giant teddy bear looming imposingly over the doorway. Following on from here, I had the important job of constructing the toilet block. Now, I was working with the model I just ripped out from the previous chapter, but it was clearly going to need a bit of a facelift to fit in with this map. So I recolored the internals, added some new textures for the tiles and a wood texture and so on, but it still seemed a bit lacking. So what I did is I added these wooden slats along the frontage to sort of match the walls and then it really started to come together. One beautiful toilet block complete. And not only that, but the rest of the build is now well on its way. You can see there's still quite a few blank areas and lots of details to fill in, 
but in terms of the main structure, the layout of the map is certainly past the halfway point now. That just leaves the right hand side of the map to fill in. Starting off with this circular area, which I'd planned out to be a eating area. I was originally thinking of using the child tables from chapter one, but they didn't really fit in. So I made a new wooden picnic bench instead, and then copied over the ticket booth and set about converting it into a little kitchen, which if you can't tell from the humongous sign on the roof, yes, they do sell pizzas here. Now, seeing as the player will be briefly entering inside, I did need to have an interior too. Nothing too fancy, but I went with this cozy little pizza oven and we have ourselves a pretty neat picnic area. Now from a land of hot food to an icy one, and it was time to fill in the bottom of the map with my planned penguin enclosure. This took a bit of playing around with a terrain editor to get the look I wanted, and I still wasn't quite happy with it. So instead, I turned my attention to the second bridge, which currently was just this sort of rudimentary plank dumped across where I wanted my real one to go. So I set about placing some support columns through the water and created the slight curve to give the bridge a somewhat more graceful appearance, which I can then come back at any time and actually fill in with the details that I want. But for now, I set about connecting up the two areas. So I created a walkway along the side of the wall, but rather than just leaving a blank wall for the players, which would look a bit plain, I placed down a row of trees in front of it to help break things up a bit. I decided to save myself from any more tree design though, and I, so I just copied the, the one from earlier. And you can actually still add a reasonable amount of variation here just by resizing and rotating. So it avoids them all looking exactly like the same at first glance, even though they obviously are. I then added in a quick decorative wall to separate it off. And later I'll add an invisible wall to stop the player from climbing on the trees. But for now, having just a little wooden fence acts as a visual deterrent from the player to know it's an area they can't go to. Suddenly the area isn't looking quite so empty. Although there's still a little bit of a space where I can add in another building, but we'll do that later. For now, I turned back to the bridge and converted it into a rather more pleasant stone and brick combination with some walls and posts running along it and some arches underneath. You can see the image of a bridge I'd found online and I, I think the final results ended up matching it pretty closely. Now it's time to fill in that little spot down there. So yet again I copied the ticket booth and I'm certainly getting some great mileage out of this simple model. Uh, but this time I was converted it into a storage hut. Maybe it contains food for the various animals or something. I'd later change the appearance a little bit more so it didn't look quite the same, but for now it's perfect. And here we are, well on our way to a beautiful zoo. The perfect place to abandon and terrorize small children. Talking of which, it was time to see what the map would look like in darkness. As that's what the player will experience and it's here that it really starts to come to life. So the lights turned down, I started to play about with different lighting. Now I think with horror games it's best to avoid any lighting that is too white or too bright, too harsh. So instead I like to add lots of little small detail lights that can then give off their own shadows and ominous glows to each area. So all the wooden bridges and fence posts got these little flaming torches. And then the stone bridge and butterfly house were given this eerie green glow. I then added in loads of floodlights where needed to ensure all the paths were properly lit. And by keeping the lights directional by using floodlights, it helps to keep the area surrounding it nice and dark. At this point, I stepped back into the light once more and turned my attention to the giraffe enclosure. Just having this bare bones green railing wasn't really going to cut it. So I had the idea of creating a wooden viewing platform. That didn't really look quite right, but I liked the idea of having a wooden decking. So I placed that along the floor and then swapped out the, the green fencing to something that seemed a little more suitable to giraffes. There was still quite a lot of leftover room though. So I grabbed one of the cabins I'd previously made for the forest camp map in chapter two, and it seemed to fit quite nicely. I tried out a few different positions and configurations and ended up settling for this position on the right where it backed out onto the picnic area. And then I built this enclosed canopy area along the top from which you can view the giraffes. You can get quite a good view of it from this more viewed out angle. You'll also notice by this point that I've placed down hundreds of little paving stones on that walkway by the trees. I'll save you from having to watch the thrilling footage of this rather tedious process. Most of what follows from here is all the little fiddly details like adjusting planks to fit around this door, 
adding in lights where they needed and so on. But I then returned to the butterfly house which was still empty so I added in a tree into the middle for decorating the edge of the building with this flower bed to give the place some more colour. You may notice how at this point there's only two entryways to the island and they're both right next to each other which isn't really great for chase scenes or for gameplay anyway. Uh, so what I did later on is I'll add in a third uh, entryway which you see inside the game sort of as an alternative escape route. This also has the effect of making the area like a kind of roundabout junction where you can access every other area of the map from, which in turn makes it a prime location to be killed by Teddy here. Now seeing as I'd put so much work into all the animal enclosures, I decided to add in some more personality to each exhibit with a little sign. Now I know a lot of players probably don't stop to read these if they're being chased around the map. So I started out with basic facts, but Where's the fun in that? So I swapped out for having three normal facts followed by a mildly sinister fourth. Look, I'm not saying this penguin will pet your eyes out, but it could if it wanted to. Anyway, have fun children! Talking of which, let's upgrade the security to ensure nobody can get out the front gate too easily. I'm thinking of the animals here, obviously. So I converted the ticket booth into the home of the security system which will control this slightly bizarre sci-fi looking interface of levers. The player will have to gather tools around the map in order to unlock it and open up the new backup grates which are placed in front of the main exit. All for their safety, obviously. With the gate secured I could then move on to the task of placing the various locks and keys around the map. This is mostly procedural with a little bit of planning that goes into it all, but for the penguin enclosure I thought it'd be fun if you had to feed the penguin a fish in order to then get access to the key. So I made this stinky little fish area with some old bones and then a huddle of penguins which would surround the key spawn. Then it was a case of rigging the penguin model, this is a model I just grabbed from the toolbox, it's a free model, but I had to rig it up and then I created a simple little waddling animation to breathe a little bit of life into it. And there we have a wonderful fish based opening mechanism. So there we go, after many hours of work we now have a working zoo to terrorise countless small children. Hurrah! Another successful project. Now if for some reason you haven't played chapter 4 yet, there'll be a link to the game in the description where you can give it a play. And yes, for those wondering, this will sadly be the final chapter in the Teddy series, but I promise you it's not quite the end of this Teddy story yet. In fact, I hope to have something rather special to share with you all later this year. But until then, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye!